Are you running Google ads and does your business take phone calls? Then you definitely want to have phone call conversion tracking set up in your Google ads. In this video, I'm going to show you three ways to set it up and then talk about when you would want to use each way. So we're going to look at setting up the ad extension conversion or the ad asset. We're going to look at tracking phone clicks, and then we're going to look at the dynamic swap. Let's dig in. So the first type of call tracking that we're going to set up is using the ad asset. So this is what was used to be called an ad extension. And it's really an add on to your ad that lets people call you directly from your ad without ever visiting your website. So this can be great for people who are using a mobile device. The one thing that you'll have to do is you'll have to have a campaign set up for you to be able to do this. Then we're going to go into the tools and settings and go to conversions. And here we're going to create a new conversion action. So we're going to click here, click phone calls, and we're going to go calls from ads using call extensions or call only ads. Click continue. We're going to give this a name. So I like to call this calls from ads and I'll write just conversion just to, just so we can find it easier after then we're going to select a value. So depending on your business, it's good to actually assign a value. So if somebody who talks to you for a minute or two minutes typically converts, if it's a booked appointment, you're a, a local service provider, it's good to just give it a rough estimate. And that's going to help you better optimize your campaigns down the line. So in this case, I'm going to give a call a value of about $50. But you should certainly try to think about this to give it the right amount of value there. I tend to select one for this situation. If you want to assign a value to every phone call, you can select every, but if the same person calls multiple times, in this case, we're just going to count it as one conversion. For call length, this is also business dependent. So the default is 60 seconds, but you can increase or decrease this as you see fit. For the click through window, I would suggest keeping this at 30 days and keeping this attribution at data driven. We're going to go create and continue. Done. And that's been created. So now we have to go set up the extension that's going to be linked to this conversion. So we're going to go back to the home page here, go to ads and assets, go to assets, click on call, click create. So you can add a call extension actually at different levels within the account. So for me, I'm going to set it up currently at the account level. But if you're a business that is running campaigns in different locations, and each location has a different phone number, you might want to assign it at the campaign level here. Or if you wanted to be really granular, you could add at the ad group level. Uh, but in most cases, campaign or account should be good. And like we see here, this actually adds a button to the ad that lets people call you directly from the ad. So for me, I'm going to select this as Canada, add my phone number here. And I'm going to select the conversion that I created. And that's why I labeled it conversion, just so I could find it here. The thing is, you don't have to set this up beforehand. But if you do, you just ensure that you have your settings set up correctly. If you don't set it up, if you use the default, it's just going to create the conversion for you. But then you won't have um, set your seconds in advance, basically, in your other settings. So I'm going to select this conversion here. There's some advanced options if you wanted to set your time. So if you're a business that takes uh, messages, you might just want to leave this as all the time. But if you only pick up the phones and you don't have a message system, you might want to adjust this to your business hours. So we're going to go save and create. And that's now been created. Now we're going to look at how you can set up clicks to a phone number on your website. So in order to do this, you're going to have to have Google Tag Manager correctly installed on your website, because that's what we're going to use in order to create the event and then send that data to Google Ads as a conversion. So from this section here, we're going to go to new conversion action, then go phone calls, and then clicks to a number on your mobile website. One thing to note is that this will actually still track clicks uh, on a number that comes from a desktop user. The difference is it's only tracking the click and is not based on the call duration like the one we set up before. Then we're going to go to continue and go to here and just type in phone number clicks. So we're tracking here. In this case, you should still set a value. So you're going to set the value, but you might want to set it a bit less than the one that you're setting based on duration. And the reason for that is that the same person can often um, you know, have less intent if, they, if they're just copying and pasting. It's not a truly tracked conversion based off duration. So it's a 
slightly less valuable because you can't guarantee that every click resulted in a valuable phone call. So that's why I would typically set this quite a bit lower, maybe $20 per phone call here. I'm going to keep it the same as one, and that's especially important with this type of conversion. So with a click conversion, one person can click on that phone number 10 times and you don't want that to count as 10 conversions. So you're going to keep this as one. And then for all of these settings, I would keep these as the default as well. So we're going to go create and continue. And in order to set this up, we're going to use Google Tag Manager. So we're going to click here, and then we're going to note the conversion ID and the conversion label. So we're going to need these two numbers here to set up our conversion. So going within Tag Manager, this has now been set up within our account. So we can go to Tags. Now, when we're looking at tags, there's two things in Tag Manager that are the most important tags and triggers. Trigger is the actual event. That's what's going to fire and tell you that something happened. And the tags are going to bring that event to a platform. So we're going to use the tag to bring that event to Google Ads. But in theory, you could use one trigger and send multiple tags. So you could send a tag to Google Ads, a tag to Google Analytics, a tag to your CRM. So that's the way that works there. So we're going to start with tags and go to new. We're going to call this phone clicks. And actually, I'll start that off with GADS. And that's my naming for Google Ads, phone clicks. Then we're going to go tag configuration, Google Ads conversion tracking, and paste that conversion ID here. Now we can go back and grab that conversion label. Now that I've grabbed the conversion label, I'm going to go next and just create this event here. So now it's been created, but it's inactive. So it's not been set up yet. So we got to go, so we got to go keep here to set it up. So I'm going to go here, put that label there. So this is set up correctly. The tag is set up where we have the conversion ID and the conversion label. Now we have to create a trigger to make that fire. So we're going to go to trigger. And before we do, I'll show you how these are set up. So a phone number within a website. Here's my website here. I have this phone number. So when you look at this, if you click this link, for me, it opens Skype because that's a telephone link. And a lot of websites are built like this, where because they're using a telephone link, you can click it. And if you're on a desktop, it'll open Skype. But if you're on a mobile device, it'll actually go straight to your phone. So uh, that's why it's set up like that. So when you right click on this and go inspect, you can actually see that this is a telephone link. So it starts with TEL semicolon um, 55555 there. So we see that that's a telephone link. So that's basically our indicator of how we can track this event. So when we go back into Tag Manager, I'm going to go create new trigger, and I'm going to call this phone click trigger. And that's how we're going to set it up. So within here, there's multiple different ways we can set up a trigger. So I'm going to choose this one for just links. So this is a trigger that lets you track links on a website. Then we're going to go to some links, click Earl contains tell. So I would typically set it up like this. Because this will actually capture, if you have five or six phone numbers on your website, this will capture all of those. So if you have one number, this works. Um, but if you have multiple, this will also work for all of them at the same time. So I find this is a great way to set up this trigger. So click URL contains tell. We're going to save that. Now we're essentially good to go. We're just going to debug it to make sure that it works correctly. So in order to debug it, I'm going to go grab this contact. I'm going to come back into Tag Manager, and we're going to go to Preview Mode. This lets you see if your event is firing correctly. So we're going to paste that there, go Connect. And now we have this window that's open in Debug Mode. So we see that we're connected. And the way what we're looking for is we have tags fired on the website and tags not fired. So when the website loads, we have my LinkedIn Insight tag here, the Google Ads conversion linker, but these are events that are set up in Tag Manager that have not fired. So we're going to test if we can get this Google Ads phone click to fire here. So by coming back to this preview debug here, I'm going to click this. I'm actually going to click it twice just to, to make sure there's no delay. It seems to speed things up. And then we're going to come back here, and we see that now in the tags fired section, we have this full, uh, Google Ads phone click that's fired two times. So that tells us that this has been set up correctly. The last step to do is to go back here, and we can see that this is in our Tag Manager, but it's not been published yet. So you're going to want to go ahead and publish this to push it live to your website. So we're going to go Publish. If you wanted to, you can add a note. You could say Added Phone Click Tracking, and then go Publish. And then you're good to go. This has been set up correctly.
So the last way to set up phone call tracking is using Google Ads dynamic swap method. So this will actually let Google replace the phone number on your website only when someone comes from Google Ads. Then when someone calls that number, it'll get forwarded to your real number. This lets Google track the exact duration of the phone call and is the most accurate method for tracking phone call conversions. So in order to set up this, we're going to go to a new conversion action, go to phone calls, and then do calls to a number on your website. We're going to give this a name. In this case, I'm going to call it calls from website dynamic swap, just so it's extra clear in our tracking naming convention. Then we're going to give it a value. In this case, I'll give this 40. And I, again, I'm going to keep it as one. And then for the phone number, we're going to put our phone number. This is where we want the actual call to go. So this has to be your good phone number. So I'll put my example phone number here. And this is the display number. So this has to actually match what is on the website um, currently. So it just it's it's often the same thing, but in some cases it might not be. So I'm just going to copy that and go back to here, put the display number as this. So what I'm saying is that when Google has this display number, which I just showed on the website, I wanted to swap it and then forward it to this number here. Here I'm going to keep the call as 60 seconds, 30 days, and data driven. That's good in this case as well. We're going to go create. We're going to go Google Tag Manager and just copy the ID. This one is a little different when we're setting it up. So when we're in the tags here, we're going to go new tag. We're going to call this calls from website dynamic swap. And it takes a different tag. So we're going to search for a tag. Just start typing call. And you're going to grab this one, Google Ads calls from website conversion. So this is the displayed number. So I'm going to put that conversion ID here in the conversion ID box. Um, go grab that label, click next, and I'll just actually create this uh, conversion. We have it set up. Now we have to go finish the tracking. So I'm going to put that label here. And the displayed number is just this 555 number that I have here. I'm going to go grab that, put that in that box there and go triggering. So in order to trigger this, we're actually going to trigger it usually on all pages. The reason for that is, you know, on my website, I just have, uh, well, I don't actually typically have the phone number, but you know, it might just be on the contact page, but on some websites, it could be on the footer, it could be in the header in just in order to always be swapping the number. It's good to just let it fire on all pages. So the one thing to note is that it's only going to swap the number when someone comes from Google Ads. It's not actually going to change your website for organic traffic or traffic from other sources. Then we're going to go save. And then essentially, um, we're going to, we can go into the preview mode again there. So I'll go, I'll go grab, um, go grab this Earl. Grab that. It's already there actually. Go connect. So here we see we have our page loaded. We can go back here and we can see calls from dynamic website. It's fired. So it's not counting a conversion yet, but it's kind of in a listening stage. So it's fired. And if there was a call that was longer than 60 seconds, it would count that as a conversion. So this is set up well. There's one last thing that you can test in order to confirm that it's set up well. And unfortunately, um, it doesn't work well with Webflow. So I'll just walk through it anyway, nonetheless, but I'll go back to overview. I'll go publish this conversion. So it's live on the website. Then I'll go back to here. I'll refresh. And there's something called, uh, if you add this to the end of your URL slash, um, if you add this to the end of your URL slash Google hyphen WCC, which means uh, website call conversion slash uh, a debug. If you add this to the end of the URL and then you press enter, so it doesn't always work with Webflow, unfortunately, but for WordPress, this works um, all the time. You'll get a little pop-up box that lets you test if it's working. And then what you'll do is you cl you'll click on the button that says force and if your number, your phone number will actually switch to nine. It'll switch to a bunch of nines. And if it does that, that's just like that extra validation that it's set up correctly. So unfortunately I can't show that here, but that is something you could test as well if you wanted to. So it's as simple as that. And with that, we've just set up phone call tracking three different ways. So now we've set up three different types of phone call tracking. And I just want to talk for a quick moment about when you would want to use each of these. So in most cases, if your business has a phone number, you will want to use the calls from ad extension. This is a great one. It's easy to set up. 
um, and people can call you directly directly from your ads. So this is a great one to set up. When it comes to the dynamic swap and the phone clicks, there are some pros and cons to each. So one thing to note is that it's typically better to choose one or the other, because if you're using the dynamic swap and the calls at the same and the phone number clicks at the same time, when if someone's on a mobile device, they can click on it. That'll be a conversion. And I've tested this where if you click on it, it actually will still go towards the dynamic swap number afterwards. So um, we have to keep that in mind where then if the call is 60 seconds, you might actually be getting two different conversions. So typically, if you're using dynamic swap, I would not use clicks. That's one thing to keep in mind. There are some other considerations as well. So in terms of how practical they are, if you have a website that has like 20 phone numbers, if it's a big corporate website, it might be simpler to use the phone number clicks because you can set up that one trigger for all of them at the same time. It takes less uh, monitoring and, and updating if those numbers change because every time your dynamic swap number changes, if you change the phone number, you have to go update your, your tracking. So we, you have to keep that in mind as well. One other consideration is that some businesses that I've worked with that, is in, that we have implemented this in the past, they start to tell me, hey, my clients are comp complaining. They can't reach me. They can't text me. So if you're a, a local service business business that does a lot of business through text message, that dynamic swap might actually mess up your their, the client's ability to text you. So it really just works for calls and not text. So you have to keep that in mind as well. So in, in summary, this is the most accurate form of tracking. You're tracking the phone call duration. You're kind of compromising here on clicks because uh, you'll likely get more clicks than actual phone calls uh, in a lot of cases. Maybe not people don't follow through. Maybe they're just copying it for later. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. So overall, I tend to prefer in most cases the dynamic swap, and then I'll default also back down to clicks if needed. Uh, that's how I approach it. But you should definitely think about your client or think about your business and how you want to look at your tracking. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and please do subscribe if you like this content. There's a lot more videos to come. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later.